Hello, and welcome to Mrs. Schlecht Explains How to Multiply Fractions. For this activity, in order to be successful, you're going to need a couple different things. One, you're going to need your math notebook so that you're able to take great notes. Number two, you're going to need your Envision math textbook. That's the one that has a little robot on the front. You're also going to need a pencil. Okay, so the first part of this lesson is to use pictures or models to help you understand and visualize what multiplying by fractions looks like. Now, we're gonna use a model to show how to multiply 1 fourth times 1 half. Here's a tip. I like to use two separate colors when I'm making these models. You'll see why, it just helps you spot the difference. However, if you just have your pencil, you can totally be successful as well. So the first part of drawing this model is to draw a rectangle. You wanna make sure that your rectangle is large enough so that you're able to make different boxes and do different shading and it's big enough that you'll still be able to see what you got going on. I'm gonna look at my first fraction. My first fraction is 1 fourth. So I'm going to cut this rectangle into fourths and I'm gonna use blue so that we're able to see which part is my 1 fourth. All right, so I've taken my rectangle, I've split it into four different sections, one, two, three, four, and I shaded one of those four sections blue because again, my fraction is just one fourth. How about that one half? Am I able to still use this same picture to represent one half? Uh-huh, yeah. Did you say yes? Of course you can, good job. But here's a way you gotta do it. Did you notice that for the fourths, I made those long skinny boxes, right? I used those vertical lines to help me make the four. But for my one half, I'm going to use a horizontal line to be able to split this rectangle into a half. And I'm gonna use pink to help us see the difference. So now you'll notice that I used one horizontal line right here to cut my fourths in half. And now I shaded the top part to show you that's where that half would be. But now, do I just have fourths? Do I just have a half? I want you to think, what denominator do you think I'm now going to be using for my new fraction? Hmm, that might sound like a big question, but think about it like this. How many boxes do we now have? Do we just have four boxes? Do we just have two boxes? Hmm. So let's see, we start off with four boxes, but then I cut it in half. So how many total boxes do I have now? Well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that tells me that whatever the answer is to one fourth times one half, the denominator is going to be an eight. So as you can see, I've written my answer with eight in my denominator because according to my picture, I'm going to have eights for my answer. But how do you determine which number is going to be in the numerator? Do you notice that I colored my fourths blue and then I colored my halves pink? But there's one square right here where there's both pink and blue. They're overlapping. How many squares have overlapping blue and pink? Just one. Did you say just one? That's correct. There's only one square right here out of this entire rectangle that has both the blue for the fourth and the pink for the half. So that tells me that's where my answer is. So the answer to this problem, one fourth times one half is one eighth. So again, that's how you can use a model to help you multiply fractions. So before we move on to our next problem, I just wanna look at that same problem we just did. 1 fourth times 1 half. And if you remember, the answer that we got to this problem was 1 eighth. Do you notice any patterns or relationships with these numbers that help you figure out what our answer is without using that model? What is 1 times 1? What is 4 times 2? Hmm, this is looking kind of easy. Could it be that easy? So when you're multiplying fractions, it's so easy peasy lemon squeezy and here's why. You just multiply the two numerators and then multiply the two denominators and there's a new fraction. Here's what I mean. What's one times one? One. What's four times two? Eight. One eighth. So that's a way that you can multiply these fractions without having to draw the picture. So now let's look at some problems in your textbook to help us practice multiplying fractions. The next problem we're going to look at is in your book on page 26, and it's problem number 39. All right, so here's problem number 39 on page 36. 
It says the world's smallest gecko is three fourths inch long. An adult Western banded gecko is seven and one third times as long. How long is the adult male Western banded gecko? So let's think really quick. Which numbers am I going to be multiplying? What are the only numbers in the problem? You're correct. So for this problem, I'm going to need to multiply three fourths times seven and one third. Now, before I start solving this problem, I don't know about you, but this looks a little weird. What is it about these two numbers that might be a little bit different than that nice problem we just did where it was one fourth times one half? Do you notice the mixed number? Yeah, there's a mixed number. Now, I can't just multiply with the mixed number in this form. What I need to do is I need to convert it to an improper fraction. Do you remember how to convert a mixed number to an improper fraction? Uh, I never learned that. Well, if you're thinking you didn't really learn it, which you did, but maybe you don't really remember, here's a quick walkthrough. In order to transfer a mixed number into an improper fraction, I will take the denominator, multiply it by my whole number, and then add my numerator. So can you now please rewrite this equation with an improper fraction instead of a mixed number? All right, so here's our new problem. You'll notice that 3 fourths stayed the same. That was already a fraction. That was already good to go. But we now have 22 thirds, which is an improper fraction. How did we get that? Well, we converted the mixed number, which was 7 and 1 third, and we got the improper fraction, which is 22 thirds. Now, did we change the value of this problem? Nope. All we did was we changed the look of it so that it's easy for us to find the answer. So now that we have our problem written down, do you remember the steps for how we multiply fractions? That's right. We first need to look at the numerator, and then we look at the denominator. So here's what I mean by that. So this is how we will actually solve this problem. You'll notice that I took the numerators, 3 and 22, and I wrote them as a multiplication sentence. I also then took the denominators, the numbers on the bottom of our fraction, and wrote those over here as a multiplication problem. Now when we solve these two, that will give us the answer to our problem. So now let's think. What's 3 times 22? And what's 4 times 3? 66 twelfths! Yeah, that's the answer to this problem. But I'm thinking to myself, what is up with this number? Hmm. It's an improper fraction again. Should we leave it as an improper fraction? Hmm. No. Let's convert it to a mixed number. So again, here's my problem, and I end up with a product of 66 twelfths. But we know that's an improper fraction, and that we are able to rewrite it as a mixed number. Do you remember how we do that? Division! Did you say we're going to use some division? You're right! What we're going to do is we're going to make this and this into a division problem. 66 is now my dividend. 12 is now my uh, divisor. How many times can 12 go into 66? Five times. Did you say five times? Good job! But now, what's 5 times 12? 60. So now I'm going to tr subtract 66, and I'm going to take 60 away from that. And that gives me 6 as an answer. That's your remainder. So how can you write 66 twelfths as a mixed number? So here's how we could write that improper fraction of 66 twelfths as a mixed number. You can either do 5 and 6 twelfths, and I'm sure you know that 6 twelfths, you can simplify that fraction to 1 half. So the answer to this problem is either 66 twelfths inches long, or we can say 5 and a half inches long. And we have one more example that we're going to do together. This is also found in your book on page 26. This is problem number 40. This is problem number 40 on page 26. And the reason I chose this problem is it looks really complicated. It's really wordy, but the math itself actually isn't that difficult. Let's see it. This problem says, in Mr. Barkley's classroom, two-fifths of the students play chess. Of the students who play chess, five-sixths of those kids also play Sudoku. If there are 30 students in Mr. Barkley's class, how many students play chess and Sudoku? So here's a tip. 
Sometimes when you see that word of, do you know what of is actually telling you to do? Let's think, we're multiplying fractions, so I wonder if the answer to Mrs. Schluck's question has something to do with multiplying fractions. It can also represent multiplying fractions in this case. So for example, when we say two fifths of the students play chess, well, how many students does Mr. Barkley have? 30. Yeah, you're right. Mr. Barkley has 30 students. That means two fifths of the 30 students play chess. So before we continue on to the second part of our question, let's solve that first. And we have two fifths of, which means multiplication, of the 30 students. Hmm. What do you notice about this problem that might make it a little difficult for me? There's a fraction and a whole number. There's a fraction and I'm going to try to multiply that by a whole number. Hmm, that seems kind of tricky. But do you remember what's actually the denominator inside this fraction that looks like a whole number? What do we put underneath it? I wonder what number could we be putting in the denominator? Just one. So if I make this into 30 ones or 30 over one, that does not change the value of my number. It just simply changes the look so that it's easier for me to perform my operations. So now let's look at it. I'm going to be multiplying two times 30 for my numerators. My denominator will be five times one. Let's do that math now. So you can see here how we solved the problem. We had two times 30 in our numerators because that's my numerators in my problem over five over one because that's my denominator in the problem. I multiplied it and I got 60 fifths. Hmm, that's an improper fraction. I wonder if I can convert it to a whole number. What whole number would that be? 12, you're right. That means that 12 students in Mr. Barkley's class play chess. But are we done? No, we're not done yet. The reason we're not done is because the question was not asking me how many students play chess. The question was asking me how many students play chess and Sudoku. So I now know that only 12 kids play chess. Let me reread my problem. It says, of the students who play chess, five sixths also play Sudoku. So I'm taking five sixths of the number of students who are playing chess, which is 12. So from the first part of the problem, we found out that 12 kids are going to be playing chess. Now I want to know, out of these 12 kids who play chess, five-sixths of them also play Sudoku. So how many kids is that? Hmm, what would your new multiplication problem be? Four of five-sixths of the total students. If the total number of students right now is 12. Hmm. So this is the equation that we can use to solve this. I have five sixths. That's the fraction of the students who play both chess and Sudoku. And then I have 12 over one. 12 is the number of students that I have who play chess. And if you remember, the reason I put the number one in the denominator is to make this whole number 12 into a fraction so that it's friendlier for us to multiply with. Now, let's multiply. Remember, you're going to multiply the two numerators and then write that over the product of the two denominators. So after I perform this operation, I get 5 twelfths over 1 sixth is the same as saying 60 sixths. But do you notice again, we have an improper fraction. So how can we convert this improper fraction to a whole number that will answer my question, how many students play both chess and Sudoku. 10, you're right, it's 10. I can take my numerator, which was 60, divide it by my denominator, which was six, and get my answer of 10. So there's 10 total students who play both chess and Sudoku in Mr. Barkley's class. All right, and that was Mrs. Schlecht explains how to multiply fractions. Please let me know if you have any other questions.